Hey guys, it's a lovely day here again. Overalls are off. There's the view out my workshop door. Yeah, some of you get hassled for being a short prick. That's because I am. Well, funny enough, if you look out, out, out that way. Hobbiton's just over there. So I feel right at home. I better do some work. So in front of me, there's some uh, throttle bodies. And we, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to modify a couple of throttle bodies to suit either either standard computer or aftermarket. For the aftermarket one, we're going to remove the idle speed control unit and fit this two-wire solenoid. So that's perfect for running your low-end link ECUs, maybe even a mega squirt or a Microtech, or if you want to save uh, outputs on a bigger ECU. So here's an early motor. We're working on a Gen 1 or a Gen 2. There are some differences in the throttle body, which we will discuss. The throttle body. We've got the main throttle shaft coming through. We have the throttle stops actually at the bottom, not up here like some people think. Here's the same unit. So some people think it's this one. And that one's been wound up. But it's actually there. That's your throttle stop there. And ideally it shouldn't be adjusted uh, with the standard computer. This butterfly out here, the second butterfly, is the traction control. And this one's actually incorrectly fitted up. The, the TPS will be wrong for that one. And the idle speed control unit's located on the front of the engine. Two different kinds. So this is the later one. It can be pulled apart if you're keen enough, but it is a bit of a challenge. Or the early one, like this, which has got the three screws around. They come apart really easy. And I'll do a video one day on rebuilding one of those. I also modify the thermostat, the housing the thermostat sits into and remove some water pipes when I'm doing, especially aftermarket, but also with the standard computers when I'm doing a conversion. And we'll go through that process a little bit. I'm only going to touch on that though. The day's focus is on the throttle bodies. So we've got the Gen 1. This is a Gen 1 throttle body. Uh, now they come with traction control and non-traction. The non-traction just simply doesn't have that second butterfly. Well, I do have one over here. So there is a non-traction control. I can, I can put it on the bench. So there is a non-traction control UZ throttle body. Uh, that was off the early Sauras, and a few Celsius had it, a few Aristos. Unfortunately, this one has been broken, which is a bit of a pain, so quite nice to have. On the bottom side, there is a dampener, which just slows down the throttle closing. The breathers on the bottom side of these throttle bodies. Measures up at 18, so that'll be a 19 millimeter. And on this one, is 10 millimeter. That's a Gen 2. Uh, interesting enough, this one has got something I haven't seen on many before, which has got a thermostat or temperature control wax stat on the bottom waterline. So that's a little bit different. So that's the Gen 2, smaller breather. It's got a different water pipe on the top as well. The water runs into the top of the throttle body, then around through the bottom. The Gen 1's in through the bottom and out through the bottom. They have the traction control motor on the side, so we're going to remove that. It'll make sense soon. And it's got a, a, a vacuum line on top as well. In the TPSs, they do have different keying between the sub-TPS on the traction control and the uh, main TPS. I've also got, just as a, as a reference here, I've got the VBTI, uh, 3UZ, full drive-by-wire, no cable at all. And the VBTI, 1UZ, 
which has got the accelerator position sensor on the side of the throttle body, yet it is a still a drive-by-wire. I've done a different video on that one. So as part of the this process, I'm going to remove the sub-TPS in the housing, and I'm going to put a barb in there, and that will then allow a piece of pipe, a piece of hose, H-O-S-E, for you guys with corrupt minds, um, to run through to the idle speed control unit. And interesting enough, the idle speed control units between the early and lates also have different size pipes. Not really the focus of this video, but we'll just have a quick measure. So the early ones are a 16 mil, and the later ones measure up around about the 20 millimeter. So you'll stretch a 19 onto the onto the lates. And this process is all about tidying up the engine, making it look neater and tidier. Which is tidying up. <laughs> At the end of this process, we will also adjust the TPS. So let's get these throttle bodies to pieces. I'm actually doing two throttle bodies on this particular day, so I will to and throw a little bit between the both of them. The first thing I'm doing after removing the throttle position sensor and the sub throttle position sensor is I'm taking off the traction control mode. The only reason the main traction, or the main TPS, was removed was uh, to ensure I don't break it while I'm going through this process, and there's a bit of grinding done later on. A couple of the screws on the traction control motor were already vandalized before I got to them, so I had to get a little bit brutal. And that screwdriver is great because it's got the metal all the way through the handle. And the other ones are actually in a, in a bit of a pain of a place if you, you know, you can't get into them easily. So we're going to get rid of that traction control motor, which there are a couple of different versions of motor, but they all pretty much perform the same process. And very rarely do I need any of that stuff on a conversion. Uh, I've done one wiring job on a Sora where I actually kept the traction control, but apart from that, every other one is thrown away. That's the traction control motor gone. There's some gear that's inside there, the housing at the back. So I take that out and the washers and the springs that are in there. And uh, you'll notice this one's got no engine breather on it. That's because that one's going to a customer for a race car. Now I'm removing the water pipe off this throttle body. So often I just pop the, the hoses off. But later on I get a bit more carried away on this job. Just going to remove the dampener for the moment, but it will go back on. So later on in the video, I will be running through how to set the TPS correctly. Oh, that's tight. Now with the TPS, they're pretty simple to set up, but it's something that it's, some people find difficult. Well, the bearing, there's the bearing out. It just fell out. That was easy. So the goal is around the um, traction control butterflies to totally remove it. There's the spacer out. There's more plastic down in here. Might need some long nose pliers. So the goal with the traction control butterfly is to remove all the crap around the outside of it, get rid of the butterfly, and then remove the shaft. So that's pretty straightforward. So the screws are actually burnt off over the back of them. They just stop punching them. And these ones, they just weren't coming out, so I got brutal with the drill. And that's the, the fastest, easiest way to do it. Sometimes you can get in with a die grinder and just nip off the, the rounding on the back and then undo the screws if you're really lucky. I think I got it. Butterfly's done. Shaft out. So now we're left with a big hole. There's a seal to get in here. Even 
once you've got the shaft out, there's still some more crap to remove. We need those seals gone, because we do intend to put a barb. Uh, no, we don't. We need to put an air temp sensor in the back there on the, at both of these jobs, which will be explained later in the video. So I was working on the second one. Um, the, the top vacuum hose is going. It's going to be blanked off, but I just found something a bit interesting. So we'll just flick over to that second one, because someone has been there before me. We'll have a look at that. Now you can see that uh, something isn't quite right. I'm a little confused. My, 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 my brain's ticking over. But this is really quite weird. And I haven't ever seen this before. Now this is interesting. Someone's been in here. And have wound up the spring. This isn't... Because in a natural position, they don't spring shut. So I often see weird things when I'm working on an engine. As I've had one recently, had one and a half oil pickups on it, oil pickup gaskets on it, so it wouldn't bring up oil pressure. Shit like that happens I see all the time on motors, especially when they've been through a few hands and sat in guys' garages. Anyway, I think we've already seen me pull that part of the throttle body. Let's move on and I'll fast forward a little bit and find another bit to look at. So here I am attacking the second one with the die grinder and I just whip the back uh, of the, the screws off just down to the shaft. I don't really care about the shaft too much, it's coming out anyway, it's going in the bin. We uh, give it a little nip off and out come the screws. And sometimes you can get the screws out, often you can't, so you drill them. I really wish they were all as easy as this one and uh, I wish I had uh, done this one before I did the drilling one. Plate done. Shaft done. There's a bearing and a seal. The next bit I'm going to remove is the wall pipes. So often I can put them in a vise and a bit of a lever bar. And you give them a wiggle and they pop out. It wasn't a B on this one. I wasn't too bothered because I was going to go to plan B anyway. This was more of a demonstration to show how they can actually be taken out if you spend a bit of time on them. Get a bit of wiggle and a, and a bit of lube. This thing's often slipping in and out better with a bit of lube. So here comes the grinder with the sanding disc. My plan is to remove the water galleries off the bottom of the throttle body completely. That'll enable that little uh, water fitting to come right out because you've taken away the base that it actually sits into. That's into the rubbish. And whilst I'm only going to show a little bit of uh, sanding in this case, I spent quite a bit of time and totally covered myself in aluminium filings, almost changed colour, and uh, we tied it right up to make the bottom of the throttle body look totally smooth. And, uh, it looked really good, I was really happy with the outcome of that. I've also had a little fitting made up, a blanking fitting made up for the vacuum port at the top of the throttle body on one arm. Oh no, I did that on both. Both throttle bodies got a blank off. And uh, the second throttle body had the, the bottom port blocked off as well, which we'll see soon. I sanded off the bottom of that bracket that the traction control motor sat into. I did have to take the throttle bracket off completely to uh, complete that job. But we mark it up before sanding it off, so we don't take off a bit more than we really need to. I'd, I'd missed a couple of uh, stoppers in the traction control motor, so I popped them out. I'm trying to eliminate anything that didn't need to be there is, is getting removed and taken away. So my bag, there's the, the blankers for both the top port and this one is getting the, the bottom port blocked off. Uh, it's going to be running a, 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 a engine catch can because it's the race car. So that's that vacuum port getting blanked. And then the, 
the engine breather port getting blanked off as well. Now these were just a little bit of a crush fit. Uh, if you get them too big, they will split that throttle body. So just be very, very careful not to make that blanker too big. Of course, for normal jobs, you don't need to blank that off. You do use the breather in the normal position. Right, the next I'm going to do is I'm marking up to take off the sub TPS housing. And you want to make sure that you've left enough to tap in your brass fitting or whatever fitting you're putting in there. You can also weld fittings in there if you want, but do make sure that you drill out the hole inside because it can cause a restriction. So I find uh, my power hacksaw is generally the best way. Poor old thing's getting a bit old, but it does do the job. And again, magic will start off like this, and then uh, just a moment later, it won't be fast all the way through, and then a moment later it'll just fall off like that. That was quick, wasn't it? Reality takes a little bit longer, and I've got a second one to do. But we'll make that one even faster, shall we? So we hit it with a grinder and it with the uh, hacksaw, and job done. Look at that. Water jacket's gone. Trimmed off the bottom of that bracket. Trimmed off the front of where the secondary TPS went. Now I'm going to drill a hole out. So we can screw that in, drill and tap that. So I'm using a half BSP barb. So in with the drill. So we get in with our drill. Now this is the biggest drill that I've got. That uh, is, well, that's the closest drill that I've got of this size. And then we in we go with the cordless. Give the cordless a bit of a workout, and uh, voila, she's through. I'm going in with my tap. Now this is a half BSP tap. We start off just fine with the proper tool, but eventually we get down to a point where the uh, throttle position bracket gets in our way, so we swap it out. Now just double check um, the penetration of the fitting. Because it is a tapered fitting, if you go too far in, it'll just slide all the way in and be a pain, or if you don't go far enough, uh, it won't have a a good feel for it. Uh, often a bit of a blow in there gives it better and of course being guys we like to pop our finger and see what it looks like first to help things go in. And there we go and we'll just give it another bit of a screw and see if it works. I hadn't gone far enough uh, so I was going to give it another go. We'll check it with the, the wood nut. Really it isn't far enough so in goes the tap again. Bit of lube generally helps things to screw in a bit better with a bit of lube and out will come the crescent because that TPS fitting is in the way. Yeah, so I call that a crescent but of course in some parts of the world you will call it a shifter or adjustable wrench but over here we go by its brand name most of the time, crescent. So with that tapped uh, in I'm going to double check that I've got it screwing in nicely and tighten it up reasonably well. Check that it's seating nicely. This is a test fit, so don't be alarmed. I am gonna just I'm gonna take it all apart again. Because once I've got it to a happy place, I do need to get all those aluminium filings off the thing. Because it's covered and so am I. And one down and we'll do a second one. What I didn't actually show is my drill isn't quite big enough so it gets a little bit of a tickle with the uh, with the Dremel, the rotary file, or die grinder, depends where you want to, what you want to call it. But that just gets it out to size. I can do a reasonably round hole, we're putting a tap through it afterwards anyway, so it works just fine. So there's our second one about to be tapped as well. And we'll just uh, magic it through and uh, we'll put the tap in like that and we'll turn the fitting into it, just because it's magic. That's great with video, isn't it? Again, uh, test fit, it's going to come apart in just a moment. So on the back of the unit, we're going to fit an air temp sensor. Right, 
around about 12 millimeters. working out exactly where that air temp sensor fits and so I get it to sit nicely into position and so it sits over far enough that I can actually put a locating uh, bolt in place. I'm going to be using a 4mm screw on this case and it's going to pop through so it doesn't actually go through the throttle but just through the back of that bracket see it you can actually turn it over and see it in, in between the bracket and the main body of the throttle body so just to tickle with that uh, rotary file again to get it in place and then we get it ready to uh, mark where we're going to drill that hole and we'll whip through there with a, uh, a tiny drill again we want to make sure we do actually get it into some aluminium so it will grip Now I'm going to drill and tap a hole here for the locator, Look, the, the securing screw. So with it drilled, and I, I wasn't using it as a rotary file, I never use my drill bits as a rotary file, but uh, we're going to run a little tiny tap, a uh, 4 by one tap through that hole. So when we go and uh, that's the tap done and it is pretty tight in there if you get it in the wrong place it will give you grief. So I'm using a, a Bosch style fast acting air temp sensor. Calibration file is pretty close for most aftermarket throttle bodies and most aftermarket ECUs. So there's the modifications done. I'm going to give them a clean, get rid of all this aluminium and we'll reassemble them and we'll see what they look like. So a couple of clean throttle bodies, and let's assemble them up. Even though the fittings are tapered thread, I like a little bit of sealing on it. My preferred weapon is a, a Loctite a 518. Just pop them in and uh, screw them in nice and firmly. Right, with those fittings done up nice and tight, but not uh, too tight that it does any damage to the throttle body. And as you see how well uh, I ground off the bottom, got it nice and smooth. It's one with the breather and one without the breather fitting. We're going to put on the brackets for the uh, throttle, the throttle bracket. Again, I will be using a little bit of Loctite to secure these in there. I'll use a Loctite blue, so Loctite 243 into place. We'll do them up and uh, make sure we fit the return spring onto those throttle bodies. There's a return spring in the main body and the in the main shaft, uh, but I do like to make sure the extra ones are on there like they should be. And the race car one got a heavier duty throttle return spring. We're going to use the standard style return spring on the standard throttle body, and that's going to be used on uh, old yellow. So if you're watching videos in the future, you will see. Uh, that very throttle body uh, in my videos and uh, we make sure that the throttle bracket's on so the tactic to make thread lockers work better is to do the bolts up right and properly for the air temp sensor in the back I'm using a Bosch style fast acting if it was a turbocharged uh, UZ I would be welding in a fitting, make it a bit firmer. But these are NA, so just a rubber seal is going to work fine. So I put the seal in there nice and firm.
you just fires in. Of course, to make it go in properly, I, I did shove a bit of lube in there. If you'll notice, I've put the protective sleeve back over the uh, air temp sensor. It does pay to take that off before you start actually using the throttle body, though. I have had people do it. I'm popping the dampener on, and that just slows that throttle's return ever so slightly. Not, a, not much at all, but it's enough just to bring it down to idle a bit slower. So when you fit the TPS, the throttle shaft turns like so. So it's going to touch the throttle sensor and turn it this way. So I put it in a downward position and I bring it round. So it's just loaded up. So again, and if you pull it off, you hear it go click, and it flicks back to zero. And I will go through how to show, how to set that TPS properly. So when we look at this top screw, it should just be popping through. That's probably uh, two and a half, maybe three millimeters down underneath. And again, that uh, stopper, the throttle stops actually underneath. If you are setting up an aftermarket computer, it does pay to set the base idle. And so that's adjusting that screw underneath. So you bring the idle speed up to uh, when it's warm, about a hundred under what you want the idle to be, and then you leave your idle speed control unit to do the last 100 RPM. Another spring on my one, and I'm thinking of putting something a little bit more grunty uh, on the second th thr throttle body. So we have the aftermarket auto speed control unit, the two wire. But if you are using a factory one, this will work just fine. It'll still go to the same spot. And the throttle body cleaned up. Allows your intake to be whatever you want. Uh, it gives you much more scope. And it looks much cleaner and neater in the engine bay. Our throttle body is nearly ready to be fitted back onto the engine. But before we do, I'm going to set the, the TPS or the throttle position sensor. Here's the TPS located on the outside. They all interchange between the early ones, even though the part numbers are different and the plugs are the same. And they all pretty much work the same way. On the wiring, we've got a 5 volt. We have the sensor, the 5 volt, uh, 0 to 5 volt return should actually be like 0.5 to 4.5 return to the computer. We've got an idle switch, which is beside the earth, and then the brow on this one is the earth. So to adjust it, we have the screws off, and that will allow it to turn. It's much easier to do on the bench. Now, locating the throttle stop, it's quite important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a, a 10 thou feeler gauge between the throttle stop and the levers and I'm going to go between the earth and the idle switch. And we can see there we've got continuity. So I'm just going to turn it until we lose that continuity. Just get a feel for it. We 
You lock it up there. Pull the feeler gauge out and it drops to uh, a closed circuit. Just double check it. Just got a little bit. I'll just give it a little tweak more. There we have it, full open circuit. We just pop that out. Closed circuit. Open circuit. So that is perfect. So there's the throttle position sensor set. Real quick, real easy. There is a second way if you're doing it on the vehicle. And I'll just do that now. Just give me a moment. So a really, really quick way of uh, checking the TPS or setting the TPS is to connect a test light into the idle circuit, into the idle switch, which is the second one beside the earth, so beside the brown wire. Don't care what the color the idle switch is, the wire is. It's always beside the brown. And so when it's sitting with the throttle closed, the light should be on. So I've connected the test light to the positive terminal of the battery. It receives its earth through that switch. And as soon as that throttle opens, that light should go off. Now you'll notice I'm working from the bottom here. So if I set it up the other way around, and I move the throttle from the top because of the lever system, I'm trying not to catch anything, short anything out here. So if I move it from the top, I can actually move the throttle. See that bit there? It's for the lever system to work. And there it goes out there. So that is right where, if we're looking here, as soon as that moves, as soon as this piece that by the throttle stop moves. So I'm happy with that TPS. Just going to disconnect this before I short something out. Now to set the next one. Earth to the brown wire. Undo the screws. We want it to rotate it so it just brings that light on. There we go. Grab the feeler gauge. And into that throttle stop. And the light goes out. Out of that throttle stop, light comes on. So it's that easy. I normally check it uh, reading the numbers from the computer but it's a real simple way to do it this way and we'll confirm that with the multimeter continuity just open the throttle and the bottom and resistance from the earth to the sensor wire 0.9 and from the 5 volt to the sensor wire 4.2 I'm happy that's within spec So let's fit this onto this motor and see how it looks.
So there's the old stepper motor coming out. This one's already had a new gasket. As you can see, the, the pipe to the breather on the engine has fallen to pieces. One of the ones I've prepared, as you can see, has been blanked off in that breather. So we won't fit that one today, we'll fit the other unit. And we'll get a new piece of breather pipe. So I recommend using a piece of hose that's uh, oil resistant. I do see some having heater hose on them and they swell up. So I'm using a, a piece of Gates product there today. Next we're going to install the replacement stepper motor, the two wire. There we have the stepper installed, throttle body installed. So I'm going to give you a, a bit of a tip when I'm doing these. And I weld up the fitting on the thermostat housing. And I weld up that, the extra one that comes off the side. So like this one, it's got the line that normally goes to the heater tank. And the one that goes to the stepper. So I weld those up. And I take the lines off to the throttle body, as we've done. And we're left over with this little line at the back here. So the trip is to off the old stepper motor. Take the little rubber. And it fits beautifully onto there. And you've blanked off that back line as well. So there we have it. Two wire stepper motor for some of your aftermarket ECUs. So they work well with either the aftermarket idle speed control or the standard idle speed control. This allows you to have any intake from the throttle body that you want. Much simpler and neater and cleaner engine bay.